Hello, welcome to The Freak Show. Bumpy McSquiggums here. I want to thank you all for joining me as I continue with my Let's Play of Battle Brothers. In the previous episode, I decided that it was going to be a good idea for me to do something less running around, and I was going to go and do battle with the frenzied Axe's Den. However, having got a little bit of time to play this on my own, after playing it yesterday for all of you guys, first and foremost, Orcs are kind of a big deal, so I would say that my very best attempt at this, which I actually did attempt just to see if I was right, uh, I would lose somewhere between two and five people. I lost four. So it can be done, but people will die. And I don't think you guys want me to do that, so I'm not going to do that. I know, I promised you guys I would, but I decided that the longevity of the Battle Brothers is probably going to be a little bit more important. All of you are named now. So, let's go over the folks. We have Paulson the Dev. Thank you, sir. He, he said, hey, I want to be part of it. So that's one of the developers there, folks. We have Kaladin, or Kaladin, if you prefer, the Stormed Blessed. Or just Storm Blessed. I, they're, they're, this is how this works. It's a title and your name. So, we have Tac Lupus, the Dragon Rider. We have Felix Nagelson, the Swordsman. We have Twiggy MC. That's how I'm going to say it. If it's not like if you want to be Twiggy Mick, it's fine. You're Twiggy MC. I'm just saying, you're the pew pewer. We have Joachim Martyr, the drunkard. Uh, I couldn't figure out a good name for you, and you are a drunkard. So that's what we're gonna roll with. We have Odie, the captain. We have Kippy Kips, original casualty. Can't fit the in there, guys. Maybe eventually they might expand this out, but I think there's enough to play around with as is, so it doesn't need to be expanded. We have. Demagogly, which I guess is very much like demagoguery, but not quite. The Blind. And we have Shockness Monster, Nessie's Bro. You all know it. We all know it. Alright, so that's pretty much it. I believe there's a few things I haven't gone over since I kind of covered a lot of the stuff in the original first look that I did of this game. So, to make it all very apparent and clear to you all, I'm going to do it right now. So this is this episode is going to be a little bit more informative, and it's going to kind of showcase what's going on with the different characters and everything else. We have our naked archer. It's fine. It's totally fine. Though he does have a hunting bow, so there is something to be said about that. Also, he shouldn't have the hunting bow, now that I think about it. Sorry. We want the hunting bow to be on our best archer-type individual, which would be Captain Odie. So, sorry, man. You're getting... You're getting negated just a little bit there. I'm going to make sure I don't have any like random items that accidentally moved in the wrong spot. Okay. So, a few things. There are no classes in the game. I mean, sure, you look and it's like, hey, that's a spearman. But technically, he could use any weapon that he wanted to. And all of your skills are based off of weapons. This guy having a hatchet or an axe in this case, he's got the chop, which is the normal auto attack. Pretty much every weapon has that. Like, if we look at the spearman, it's the thrust. Now what's special about the axes, and I'm not going to go super duper in depth with this, but enough. It inflicts 50% damage on a hit to the head, which is like their critical strike. So, it does more damage in that regard. It inflicts uh, moderate, uh, actually decent armor damage and decent health damage. So, not too too bad. And then the second skill, or the specialty skill when it comes to having the axe, is the split shield ability which basically allows us to do damage specifically to shields so when folks raise their shield wall to increase their defense we can start hacking away at them and eventually uh, chop them down these two abilities are actually from our shield if we remove them they go away and I think I mentioned this before but if you use any single-handed weapon without a shield or anything in your offhand which I don't think you can dual wield guys I don't think that's a thing at least not yet uh, you get double grip, which allows you to do plus 25% damage. However, with a shield, we have the ability to knock back an enemy. And we have the ability to actually raise the shield wall. We get additional defense bonuses for everybody in a shield wall line. So, there you have it. There you have it. And then with the spear, we have an increased chance to hit. That's what the spear does. So you're more likely to hit with a spear than any other weapon. And it does... About the same damage to both armor and to health. Additionally, Spear Wall, I don't think you've seen that yet. It's the most amazing and quite possibly the funniest skill I've ever seen in any video game ever. Last night when I was playing on my own, I had a Spear Wall that basically consisted of a Spearman, 
a melee guy, a spearman, a melee guy, a spearman. And the army would come at me and try to jump in. And what the spear wall does, anytime somebody jumps at you, or closes within your zone of control, you have an attack of opportunity, basically. If you hit them with that attack of opportunity, they get knocked back from whence they came. So people were jumping in and getting knocked back, jumping in and getting knocked back. I was just laughing hysterically because they could never even close with me. I killed them all without them ever getting close enough to hit me. It was amazing. The spear wall is ridiculously good. And I want to have at least three spear users. Right now we're rocking two. We have one axe user and we have one bonker. Now, the clubs are pretty good, too. Well, we'll go over each weapon, just real, real briefly. We'll take a look at the sword first. The sword has less damage against armor, but it does still decent damage against health. And it has a 10% chance to hit. The spear has a 20% chance to hit. The sword has a 10 So, it's still a decent chance to hit. We, again, have knockback and shield wall available to us, which increases our defense. Additionally, we have repost, which basically means if anybody attacks us and they do not land the attack, we actually have a free counterattack. The downside is it does build up our fatigue rather rapidly. But that's okay. That's okay. Our archers, obviously, they have two different shots. Quick shot, which, eh. It is what it is. It has a range of six tiles on even ground or up or down, depending on if you're on the low ground or the high ground. It doesn't inflict as much damage to armor, but it does do quite a significantly large amount to health. And it says it has that between a zero and a minus 32% chance to hit, depending on distance. And you basically start with 10 arrows, and that's what you get to fire throughout the course of a battle. And then we look at aimed shot, and it's actually got a little bit of a better chance to hit, depending on distance. A plus 10 to minus 6% chance, versus the 0 to minus 32. So the further out they are, the better chance you're going to have of hitting with aimed shot. I'm just saying. Additionally, it actually does a tiny bit more damage. About 6 more on the low end, 10 on the high. And it's actually exactly the same on armor. So... There you have it, and finally we have the clubber. Now the clubber might not do the most damage. Take a look, well, the club itself doesn't do that much damage. 20 to 25. The effect against armor, not super good. It's only 90% effective against armor, so it's like, well, why would you ever use a club? Well, first off, they're pretty cheap, so that's a good sign, right? But the real reason is you get to use the ability knockout. So it has the exact same chance to hit, if I'm not wrong, which I'm pr pretty sure I'm not. It inflicts less, inflicts, inflicts less damage than your regular attack. However, if you hit them, you have a 75% chance of that hit actually stunning the target. And if you stun the target, you knock them out of their turn. They can't do anything that turn. So it's actually a very, very good skill. I would probably prefer... I would say maybe two axemen, one swordsman, two clubbers, and three spearmen as kind of my front line guys. And then I would probably rock, um, I don't know. I'd probably stick with three archers and maybe a billhook guy, because the billhook does a lot of damage. The thing is sick. Wait till you see it. Anyway, guys, that's enough babbling. I've decided that it's not going to be very beneficial, and I will get people killed if I do take up the contract to go and raise the frenzied axe den unfortunately it is what it is we're going to go to Dornan. it is what we do and i am going to get started on that wonderful trek it's not that far away so we're going to take it it's going to be some free cash monies and we'll be okay hopefully we'll be able to buy some extra stuff up and additionally let's hope that we don't get murdered along the way i apologize for the mute and the cough there folks I struggled with that for a while. I held it back, but it was starting to get the better of me there. Oh, crap. <laughs> okay, I don't know what the bandit ambushers are going to be, but we're going to back up for right now. Maybe lure them into some militia, and then we'll show you guys what the cool militia people get to actually bring to the table. Okay, there we go. So the militia did come out. It, they are bandit raiders. So if we do manage to be victorious in this... We will actually be okay, because we're going to get some decent equipment, hopefully. There's only five of them, and all five of them are melee. They do look like at least one of them has chain mail. This guy looks like he's got some sort of studded leather armor. Uh, a couple padded... Um, I totally forgot what the words were. I don't recall. Whatever this armor is. 
and it looks like a linen dealie. So, a couple nasty helmets too. So these two guys are going to be actually quite challenging for us to deal with. The rest, not so much. Um, I'm going to take to the high ground with Twiggy. And again, I'll probably end his turn because he can't do anything else. We can't fire from here. So we're going to wait. Another thing I would like to see the developers do, it would make my life easier, and I assume a lot of people would agree. Let me know if you guys think this is a good idea or not. I mean, it could be I'm just completely ignorant and just dumb, and I, I don't know what in the world it is I should be doing. But I feel like it might be a good idea if instead of the backspace key being wait, maybe making it spacebar and then E for end turn. Because backs, I'm not going to reach over and hit the backspace key. I mean, maybe I'm just being lazy, but I like my entire kit to be around where my hand rests on the left-hand side of the keyboard. So to me, it would make more sense for it to actually be, well, as I said, on spacebar for weight, because you're going to use that quite frequently. And, well, I don't know. Maybe I'm, like I said, maybe I'm just splitting hairs at this point. I'm not sure, but it is kind of my wish, my desire, my hope, my dream, if you will. Now I'm going to take that shot and get that kill. What? Good job, Dem Demagogly. Way to bring it home. Don't let them militia people steal your old kills. You got you to gotta show up and represent, man. You got to show up and represent. I don't really like my positioning here. Actually, I really hate it because he doesn't even have a shield, so maybe we should back up. Besides, he's going to be able to close with us. Yeah, completely. I figured that would happen. Oh, really? The militia with the knife was going to go get in the way. Okay. Well, good for him. All right, we're going to move there, and we're going to use our shield wall, or spear, spear wall, rather. Not our shield wall, our spear wall. I'm going to go here and use our shield wall. And we're going to wait and see what's next. All right, the big guy's coming forward. There it is. The spear wall just did work. Twice. Like a boss. I love it, guys. It's literally my favorite skill in the entire game. Like, it's the most amazing skill ever invented in, in any video game ever. Just because of how cool it actually is. It really is awesome. I'm sorry, guys. I might be talking it up a bit, but I love it. I love it to death. The spear wall is... Look at that. How can you not love that skill? It's so freaking amazing. Oh, it's so good. All right. Moving past it, let's see if we can't take a random wild shot at a bandit raider, shall we? Yeah! Ooh, we hit that too. Nice. Twice! What? Like a boss. Alright, um... Eh, the high ground thing was a good idea originally, but it turned out to kind of suck in the end, didn't it? Alright. Oh, that would have been sweet. That would have been sick had he landed that. Uh... Well, that happened. Were either of those guys my people? I'm actually exceptionally concerned right now. I don't think so. No, he double killed a militia. So that's a big two-handed sword right there. That thing did some work. Holy cow, that did a lot of damage. Oh my god. Okay, I don't I don't I don't really know what to think about that. My goodness. Like that was surprising. A militia with their little sackcloths and not quite boss. Oh man, these guys are getting some morale bonuses. Okay, cracking up on the shield a little bit there. I'll fire a couple more shots. We got a eight percent chance to hit. Well, the reason I'm doing this is I'm hoping that we're firing into the crowd. We should be able to hit one of the three, but we didn't. All right, now we have what is this, Captain Odie? He's kind of pretty good at this, so... Oh, unfortunate. We didn't actually get anything there. Okay. Very, very nervous to be here where I'm at right now, but... We're going to have to do that, and we're going to shield wall it up. I'm... I don't know. Alright, we're going to try to crack his shield completely. Unfortunately, it did not work yet. And... Spear wall failed us, finally. But not entirely. Alright, I think it's time for us to actually close in here and start laying into this guy. I don't know that we'll be able to kill him in time, but we're going to have to do something. I'm going to try to knock this guy back. Oh, it didn't work. I'll try again. Nope. Double failure. This could get real messy real quick, guys. Alright, I'm going to go for the attack. No, no dice. Oh, gosh. 
You're firing into my people, man. What are you doing? It's okay. I'm going to be firing into my people soon, too. Alright. Well, we're going to go there and miss. I'm going to do it again and miss. Okay, we're going to go for the overwhelm, I guess. Oh, man. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Stop firing into my people. You're making me nervous. Oh, big hit. 70% chance. Do we risk it? We do. Yeah. Big risk. Big plays. Oh, no. One of our boys just died. Who just died? Felix Nagelson. That was a very short-lived uh, adventure. I apologize for your death, but it's bound to happen. It is just bound to happen. There's really no way around it. It is simply what it is. Alright, again, we're going for the overwhelm here. Shield wall is up. And despite our best attempts, we're going to go with a 33% shot on this guy. And we failed. We're going to go for the aim shot again. 28. And we nailed it. What? Well, we have our first casualty, and this time it wasn't Kippy Kips. It was not Kippy Kips. Alright, it looks like his shield wall is up. So I'm going to put my shield wall up. Oh, he's lowering it. He put it back up, and he swung but missed. Okay. And, ooh, the militia man doing work. Okay, well, we can get on in after this. Actually, there's no place for us here. Hmm... It's okay. We'll move down. There's still the potential that something bad's going to happen. We're going to hope not, but... Ooh, 28% and landed a double. All right, we're going to go for the whack. Oh, no such luck with the whack. All right, I really, really don't want to fire into my own group of guys there, so I'm going to move down and around, and we'll see if we can't do something that way. All right, 51% chance. He is overwhelmed right now. There we go. Nice big old smack. Completely broke his armor, I think, which makes me a little bit sad. It does make me sad. We have a 50% chance to hit. He is overwhelmed. I'm just going to go for it. There we go. We get one more shot in here, and we are going to be looking mighty fine, mighty fine. Come on. Let's see here. Can we possibly... Like, yeah, that's way too risky. No. Do we go with the Captain Odie over the... No. <laughs> no, we don't. No. The, the, the correct answer is no. We do not do that. All right. Well, here we go with a 53% chance. <clears throat> Not quite. All right, here we go. Oh, gosh. Broke our hat. Well, you're going to pay for that. Maybe. Maybe you're going to pay for it. Oh, please don't shoot into our people. Okay, good. All right. 41% chance and victory. Unfortunately, Felix, you didn't make it, buddy. You didn't make it. You almost made it. You were a boss. You did work, but you didn't make it. And by you were a boss, you did work. You literally did zero damage and didn't do anything at all. But the fact that you were there and part of the Battle Brothers, it was it was deeply touching and very, very moving. And thankfully, we were able to fall back and use the militia pretty heavily. It's unfortunate, folks. It's unfortunate, but you guys get one shot at this. If um, no one... Like, I still have, I want to say, nine or ten names to go, and I'm sure more people are going to sign up all the time because Battle Brothers is awesome. Who wouldn't want to be a Battle Brother where their life could end just like that, you know? I, I'm saying I would be, but I have to be the commander, so I definitely can't be in here unless there is one thing that I will target. If I find myself, they the devs told me that they put the name Bumpy into the mix or the rotation. If I find a Bumpy character, I'm keeping it. Just saying. If there's like ten of them, I'm not going to keep all ten, but I will keep one. All right, so here's a very, very important thing. I did this yesterday, and I was very unhappy. There was cussing and face palming, and I was very upset. And I wanted to weep openly. This is really good, but I think it's a little bit dangerous. It's another thing the devs might want to consider. Like making maybe statistics, and then instead of leave down here, maybe make this the loot page or something, and then it pops up here with loot, like maybe another window. And then it'll allow you to leave, because I left without clicking on the loot before going, Oh, cool, I got level ups? All right, shiny arrows, I like that. I'm like, yeah, and I'm looking around, and I'm like, cool, 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 cool. Oh, this guy did, you know, a 97 damage, this guy did 102, 106, you know, I was getting all into the stats, and I was super happy about it. And then I didn't do this, and I left all of the equipment behind. And I have to tell you, it was exceptionally sad. So we killed some bandit raiders, 
which is actually exceptionally difficult, so we were super duper lucky. Padded surcoat, that's what it was. Unfortunately, we did not get that heavy chain mail the guy was wearing, or the other, like, studded leather or whatever it was. I find it's actually kind of difficult for us to get those pieces of equipment. Like, the armor is almost never picked up. I find. I mean, this is my own personal experience. So, with that, we're going to leave the battle. And I guess we're going to go back to Menarkin here. And we have some level ups and things to do, and that's probably going to pretty much do it for the episode once we do the level ups. We should have a decent amount of money, but not enough to really get anybody amazing. I guess we'll get Rolo. Now we're going to go to the other town and we'll get somebody, but before we do that, let's sell some stuff. I think I'm going to actually repair it and sell it in the next place. I think that's going to be the plan. I am going to use some of this stuff, though, as well. I'm probably going to keep one Warhammer. I'm going to keep a mace. Definitely going to keep the shields. And I'm going to keep the helmet. I only got one helmet? Darn, I was hoping I get two. That's right, we cracked the last helmet right before we killed the guy. And I'm going to keep the two-handed greatsword. That's a boss weapon. It's worth a lot of money, too. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is... We're going to go do the level ups right now, and then we're going to leave, and we're going to go do the quest, and I'll talk to you guys while we... You know what, we'll do the... I guess we're going to do the level ups. You know what, nah, nah, nah it's fine, it's totally fine. Alright, we're going to leave, I'm going to mark stuff for repairs here. And we're going to mark all of these for repairs. And hopefully, it all pans out. Now what I'd like, additionally, would be to maybe outfit some of our people with a little bit better gear if at all possible like maybe remove the hat from Paulson the developer and since he is a boss I'm gonna put him up there he might be a boss I don't know is he a boss 60 melee skills pretty impressive yep I'm gonna say he's a boss he has the gambeson as well so we're gonna move this down to to Odie. I think Odie with his flowing red hair, I think he needs a, a giant skull cap on his head. This is what you get for getting the supporter pack, by the way, guys. You get the Fang Shire helmet when it does release. There's a few different options you have. The base game, the deluxe version, I think it's $20, $25, and then the supporter pack, which I don't remember everything it gives you, but it gives you this hat for sure. And I think there's something else it gives you, but that's $40 if you want to support the game more than just the basic picking up of the game. You guys can do all of that as well. Joachim, we're going to go over here and give you an actual shield. Same thing with the Shockness Monster. I'm going to give you an actual shield and a helmet, maybe. Nope, nope, you don't get a hat, sorry. Alright, the Padded Surcoat you do get, though. And I think that's it. We're going to hold the other Padded Surcoat for now. We have a Short Sword available, which... Is not as good as the Falchion. And I think our other guy died. Maybe he had the short sword. Alright. So we are going to continue on. We'll do the leveling up in the next episode. For now I'm going to attempt very, very much to make it to my goal, to my objective. Which I did not make it to this time. But we got a battle out of it, folks. A battle that, well, technically we should have gotten completely crushed at. We did lose one battle, brother. It was a sad, sad reality. I mean, I will always miss good old uh, Felix Nagelson, but you know what? It's okay. He served his purpose. He will always be remembered. He's now technically the original casualty in this episode, or this uh, LP. Kippy Kips, it wasn't you, my friend. It wasn't you. All right, well, we're going to continue on. Remember, folks, continue to sign up on video one is where I'd prefer you guys to do it. It's easier for me to keep track of, and I can just go there and make sure I have everything as opposed to sign-ups all the way along the entire series. Oh gosh, run for the run for the hills, man. Run like the wind, Binky. Seriously, run. I am not ready to do battle with anyone else. It looks like we're going to make it to the city of Doran pretty nicely though. So that being said, we're going to be okay. 110 crowns, I will take it. And in the very next episode, folks, well, you know what? I can probably do the level up right now. I have to cough though. My apologies. Alright, so, moving past my coughing, it's time to do some leveling up. We did get quite a bit of this back in and going. 
And I like that. I think I'm going to keep all of these items. I don't know what I'm going to do with a flail. It's a pretty, like, intensive weapon. Wow. I didn't realize the winged mace was even more... It's really effective at crushing armor, though. So if you want to just murder armor straight up, this is the one to use. Wow. I didn't... Wow, we got, like, a ridiculously good equipment there. All right. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to level the folks up. So... How do you level up, guys? Well, we go over here to this little arrow, and we go level up. And you take into account what the guy has, and what he doesn't have, and what he needs. He has no melee defense, but he is a melee individual. He only has 59 health, and he's got a pretty decent amount of... That's weird, it looked like it went down. Oh, no, it didn't. He must have... Oh, yeah, he's an original battle brother, so he's got... Okay. So we're going to give him some more melee skill. So I went up by three. We're going to give him some melee defense because he needs it. And we're going to give him a little bit more HP. He is kind of low on the resolve, so his morale could probably waver quite heavily. And he's a bit slow on his reaction. But I'm still going to go with the health for now. I'll get it up to around 70 or so, I think, is my goal. And once it's there, I'll probably do initiative or morale or maybe even maximum fatigue. It really depends. It really depends. Okay, guys, another cough. Man, it's, it's awful. Okay, now we have uh, multiple trees. We have offensive, we have defensive, we have utility. I'm not going to go over every skill point in every tree right now. Over time, you'll get to see what's up. Um, all these, you need three points in this category to unlock any of these, and then you need five points to unlock the master ones down here. Uh, go into a killing frenzy. A kill increases all damage by 50% for three turns. It does not stack but another kill will reset the timer so pretty good and our other end game one perfect focus which allows you unlimited number of other skill uses in a single turn until you're exhausted because of fatigue not too bad alright since he is an axe user we're gonna give him the ability to crush so he's gonna go for axe breaking or shield breaking abilities and we're gonna keep him on the offensive side of things I believe we're going to take a look at Kaladin here. And again, he is a melee frontline individual type guy is what I'm going to be using him as. Probably going to stay a spearman. We're going to give him some melee skill. We're going to give him some melee defense. 56 health is okay, but the fact that he's got the bonus 10, we're going to leave it at that for now. I want him to move a little bit quicker, so I'm going to give him some initi oh, initiative. Wow, that was six points to that. That's very impressive. Okay, so we're going to give him that. So he should move a little bit quicker in combat. And then we're going to go take a look at tack. Oh, wait, wait, perks. I like with the spearmen, since I feel like they're a very, very, very utility-based uh, class or weapon set or whatever you want to call them. I like to give them utility-based stuff. Now, I don't particularly like most of these things. Like, the shield bash is okay. Uh, the Pathfinder one, I don't really care about that, but it's okay, I guess. Um, bags and belts, I don't really care about that either. I, I find that that's kind of a more or less useless slot. I mean, I suppose you can carry additional weapons, like maybe a bill hook and another shield or something in case yours gets broken. I mean, it's not horrible, but for the most part, eh, it's kind of one of those... I, I don't know, I almost feel like it's a wasted talent point. That's just me, though taunt it will keep people to come attack you use more offensive as opposed to defensive things i would say that's more for like a heavily armored individual so probably after you go into the defense tree maybe get that one i don't think it works super well with kaladin however with spear wall maybe it does maybe it does additionally we have quick hands we can swap between um equipment without uh, actually using an action point that's not bad but i'm going to go with the student gain an additional 20 percent experience from battle so that's the one i'm going to go with with him i'm going to go to our other spearman joachim martyr i'm going to do the same perk i do like that perk a lot all right we're going to go here and again melee skill is a little low hopefully that climbs re relatively rapidly we have melee skill there or melee defense there not bad and we're going to go with a little bit more hp this is not super great so I would like to have everybody above 60 except maybe the archers and even them. I wouldn't mind them getting above 60. 
Okay, so we've done the two swordsmen and, or sorry, the spearmen, and we've done the axemen. Uh, let's see, we have Captain Odie didn't even level up. Wow, that's kind of impressive. <sighs> well, I guess uh, Twiggy MC was actually around longer, so hey, more power to him, right? So let's level him up. And again, this time we're going to focus on ranged skill, which is pretty abysmal. So our archers are pretty bad right now, most of them. I think uh, Odie's the only one who's not bad. And we're going to go with a little bit more HP. I'm just going to try to keep it within the 60, and it looks like we just did that. And I am okay with that, except it looks like he has a reduction, maybe? I'm not sure, we'll see. Uh, additionally, his morale isn't super high, and he doesn't move that quick. Another one I want him to do is probably first turn, so initiative is going to be in my next level up. Yeah, he's only got 55 health, so that's not bad. I don't hate that. For my archers, the one I like is fast adaptation. Basically, it means that if you miss an opponent, you have a 15% higher chance to hit him the next time. Which doesn't stop stacking until well maybe maybe it doesn't stack um gain 15 percent chance after missing i don't know if it stacks if it stacks great if it doesn't still you you keep that bonus 15 percent chance until you actually land a hit so it's pretty good it helps you with your your really really bad aim so we like that good job twiggy mc at leveling up and finally our swordsman now i'm not certain what I want to do with the perks on the swordsman. I have a pretty good idea, but I'm not 100% sold on it. We gotta get your melee skill up. It's pretty bad. Five increase is nice. Only two on your melee defense. That's a bit weak. And your HP. You have an HP bonus, so you're rocking pretty good. 68. I like that. I think I'm gonna go with fighting as a, with a shield. It's gonna make our fighting with it much more effective, and we get a bonus to defense with that. We're gonna do that. The next one we're gonna get after that is gonna be Colossus. We'll get additional hit points. It'll be sweet, sweet, nice. All right, and that's going to do it for the level ups and for episode three, folks. Let's see if there's any mercenaries worthy of hire. And I would say there might be. There's a miller. There's a couple of grave robbers. It looks like there's a few new ones. A uh, peddler. Ferdinand would be great, but I don't think we can actually pick him up. We have a cultist, and we have Hilmar, the lumberjack, which I think I might actually grab him. Uh, we have a messenger, a butcher, ooh, some interesting stuff here, guys. Mm. Well, I'll make the choice in the next episode. I might grab two. I think with selling some of the equipment we have, we might actually work out okay by just going with whatever it is that we have. Either way, folks, that's going to do it for this episode. It went about 33 minutes, give or take. I hope you enjoyed. Feel free to sign up on episode one, guys and girls. Let the world know, tweet it, shout it, Facebook it, whatever it is you do. Let the world know, Battle Brothers Early Access Season 1 has begun. A bumpy is covering it, I'm going to surpass everybody else. This is going to be my series, guys. I am going up against, I know, a few heavy hitters, and I'm probably going to get crushed in the ratings. But, you know what, I'm going to put out a superior product because my love for this game probably rivals that of the devs. So, we're going to roll out with that, we're going to hope for the best, and, well, I will see you guys probably tomorrow with another episode of Battle Brothers. I might do another one today. I Like I said, guys, I really love this game, so there's a very real possibility I want to continue on with it and just get going. So, either way, that's going to do it for this episode, guys. I'll catch you next time with more Battle Brothers. Until then, my name is Bumpy McSquiggums. Thanks for stopping by the Freak Show, and I will see you later.